Welcome to Faith Boundary, and we are just going to step into a time of thanksgiving and praise and worship this morning. Carla, go ahead and kill the background music. Okay. As, as nice as it is, we're ready to do some singing ourselves, amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to open us up with prayer this morning. God, we come to you, and we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. And we come with hearts full because of all that you have done and are doing in us today. And we're, we're wanting to lavish our love and our affection and our praise on you because you're so good. We want to lift your name. We want to bring you glory. We want to lift your name over the city. We want to join with the millions across the world that are lifting up your name today. As one heart and one voice, because there is one God and one spirit and one church, and we are a part of that. Yeah. And so we exalt you high, we lift you high, we we say, let your glory arise and be lifted high today. It's in the name of Jesus that we get to declare this. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I encourage you to stand up. Let's bring our song to the Lord. Let's let his glory rise among us.
scripture out of Psalms. So the glory of the Lord rising is not just something that happens by chance. What it is is it's actually the glory deposited into you. And in, I believe it's 1 Peter, it says that we have become partakers of his divine glory. So there's glory deposited into you, and when you express that glory, his glory rises. So it comes from you and outward and it lifts up his glory. His glory is his, his presence, his power, and his goodness. So I want to read this scripture. This is the wrong scripture.
game, I mentioned this a month ago. I went to a football game about a month ago and I saw people get ridiculously yeah. insane stupid <laughs> over a silly football game. Bunch of sweaty guys throwing around a leather ball. How much greater is God? Yeah. Yeah. He is worthy of way more than a painted belly and somebody slapping a high five. And Thank you. 
Thank you. 
You are the song. 
from your heart. Repeat after me. I know you are for me. I know you are for me. I know you are with me. I know you are with me. You are the God of more than enough. You're living inside me. I'm made for the center of your love. 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 The God of more than enough. God of more than enough. Living inside of me. Lives living inside of me. Happy are those who put their trust in Him. Amen. 
So he tastes really good. His, his presence is really good. He's just pretty much the best one around. He's the friend that you've always wanted. He's the lover that your heart desires more than anything else. So the purpose of encounter is God revealing himself so that we would be changed. So that we would have a different mindset. All of us have to come to a place where we get some level of understanding of God. God says no one, is, no one has excuses. That his nature and his character is even revealed just in creation. So that everyone is without excuse. Everyone is without excuse. Yes. Because God has revealed himself. So we saw how God revealed himself to Moses through his encounter in the burning bush. He had actually revealed himself in other ways. Moses knew that he was a miracle baby. But he ran away from the purpose for about 80 years until God called him back and said, No, I pick you to lead my people, deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. And with much arguing, he finally followed through. And we find that then it moved to God wanting to not just reveal himself to Moses, but to these, the, the nation of Israel, the descendants of Jacob. And they have been in captivity and in pain and in slavery and in torture and abuse and torment. And so these were a traumatized people. And God had heard their cries and he had remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he said, I'm going to redeem them. I'm, I'm now going to fulfill my plan and my purpose. And so he brings them out and he reveals them through <clears throat> physical manifestations of his presence. And then the first thing that they see is a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. A pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire by night that literally led them out of the land of Egypt. Led them to the edge of the Red Sea. Kept the pillar of fire. Kept them, the enemy at bay when Pharaoh came to chase after them. And then led them across the Red Sea. And now, and now they've spent a couple months in the wilderness and they're coming back to the place of Moses' encounter at Mount Sinai. And God wants to take Moses deeper. God wants to reveal more to Moses because in order to lead these couple million people into the promised land, he's, he's got a big task. His purpose is huge. And so we found out the purpose for the mountaintop experience is for that encounter. Then we talked about the presence. And, and Moses summed it up in Exodus 33. I'm just going to reread this. Exodus 33, verses 15 and 16 says, and he's talking about the presence. And, he's, and God is asking Moses to lead the people into the promised land that he originally promised even to Abraham. And Moses says this to him. If you don't personally go with us, this is Moses talking to God. If you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. Right. Don't make us go. Exactly. Here's why. How will anyone know that you look with favor on us? How will anyone know that you look with favor on me personally if you don't go with us? For your presence among us sets your people and me apart from any other people on the earth. The, the fact that you have the presence of God. We just said it. God is for me. God is with me. God is in me. You carry the presence of God inside of you. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. At this time, God was not in them. God was around them. God was revealing himself through the cloud, through the presence, through encounter, showing them. But because there was no atonement for sin, God could not dwell in this temple. But he had a plan. So we know that Moses' purpose was now to reveal God to this war-torn, tormented, abused people. Let me tell you, that is a hard thing to do. Right? I haven't done it on any level of what Moses has done it, but let me tell you, the last 20 years of my life, that's what I've been doing. And I'm, it is rough. <laughs> it is hard. When people hurt, when people are hurting, sometimes they don't want to hear good news. <laughs> Sometimes they can't accept Father's love. But Moses' purpose was now to reveal God to the Israelites first. And I pointed out some things. Specifically, and these are things, these are ways we reveal God and our purpose to reveal God to other people. 
Firstly, by listening to God's voice and obeying. By listening to God's voice and obeying. Had Moses not listened to the Lord's voice and obeyed, there would have been no rescue. Nothing would have happened. We wouldn't have the Bible. Then his next thing was he demonstrated relationship with God and revealed God by how he personally spent time with the Lord. He would go into the Lord's presence. In fact, there's two encounters in Exodus where Moses goes up on the mountain with the Lord. God calls him up to the mountain and he's there for 40 days spending time with the Lord. And we call that the cloud of unknowing where all of Moses' preconceived ideas and what he thought about God was stripped away. And he, and he was having real encounter. Like I'm talking to you, he and God were having a conversation like that. Yeah. Face to face. Yeah. The second thing was Moses, or excuse me, more than the second thing, we're now on my third or fourth thing, was that Moses was revealing God by delivering God's word to the people. He would hear from God and deliver the word. That's called prophecy. It doesn't have to be, prophecy isn't always about talking about things that haven't been done yet. Prophecy is just releasing the word of the Lord. So don't take that word and go real churchy on anybody. Just, just say, the prophecy is just us speaking what the Lord is speaking. Yes. Amen. To prophesy. Amen. He revealed God to the Israelites by reestablishing covenant. These were a people of covenant. God designed covenant, made covenant clear back with Abraham, and now these people were enfolded into that covenant just because of Abraham being obedient to God. So he was reestablishing the covenant. Moses began interceding on their behalf because these, if you know, if you went to elevate, you know that wounds create lies and sin. And so these were a people that sinned. They were, they did not behave the right way. And so Moses would intercede on their behalf. There are times when God calls us to intercede on behalf of those people around us, family members or people that we know, that we're in see, interceding for them, asking the Lord to forgive their sins, asking the Lord to cover them and protect them when they're acting terribly, asking the Lord to soften their heart and draw them back to himself. And then he continued to reveal God by remaining patient, compassionate, and faithful to his call and his purpose by not giving up on them. So we see this, and one of the things that I did, we talked about the mountain, and we talked about the cloud, but we didn't get to the tent. And this is a really, really cool thing. And in the tent is where we have intimacy. The tent, which is now called the temple. So let's talk about the tent first, because the tabernacle or the temple had not been built yet. And so I'm going to read out of Exodus chapter 33, verses 7 through 11. Moses has had his second encounter up on Mount Sinai. He's now coming down off the mountain. We talked about last week that we don't just live up on the mountain. We have to come back down into the valley and take all that we know about God and release it in the valley. Somebody say amen. That was good. Right. Hopefully you're just taking notes or something. I don't know. Exodus 33, 7 through 11. It says it was Moses' practice to take the tent of me and set it up some distance from the camp. So imagine this massive camp of near probably around 2 million people. And it was all separated by tribes. The 12 tribes, the 12 sons of Jacob. So if you were a descendant of one of the sons, you were in that particular tribe, and they were set up strategically around this massive camp of two million people or so. But Moses took the tent of me, and he stuck it out there, away from them. And it says, everyone who wanted to make a request to God would have to go to the tent of meeting outside of the camp where Moses would be. And whenever Moses went out to the tent of meeting, all the people, listen to this, all the people would get up and stand in the entrance of their own tent. And they would all watch, 2,000, 2 million people, watching Moses until he disappeared inside of the tent. And as he went into the tent, 
The pillar of the cloud would come down and hover at its entrance while the Lord spoke to Moses. Verse 10. When the people saw the cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they would stand and bow in front of their own tents. Inside the tent of meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face. Say face to face. Face to face. He would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Moses and God were now friends. And afterward, Moses would return to the camp, but there was a young man who stood behind. And he was actually going to be the next leader of Israel. And his name was Joshua. This was kind of like Moses' disciple. It was the one that was following close behind him. And so Joshua would remain behind in the tent of meeting. I thought that was kind of a cool thing. I've never read that part before. Yeah. But Joshua was having that same level of encounter as Moses was having. Joshua was having face-to-face -face encounter with God. Joshua was hanging out at the tent of meeting. So there's some significant things I wanted you to hear and grab out of this passage. Moses was taking the tent outside of the camp, and he was regularly going to the tent of meeting and spending time with God. And him going, this is him revealing God to the, this nation. Him going and spending time with the Lord caused the people of Israel to take their own time in front of their own tent to worship God. To have reverence and awe. They knew this was a significant thing. And they would watch the cloud come. And the presence of God would be. With, and so Moses literally showed the people. This is what you do. This is how you go to meet with God. This is what you do. You prepare yourself. You go intentionally to go meet with God. And you have this own time in your own life. In your own tent. Where you get to go and be with God. So God, he was revealing to them God in intimacy, in relationship, face to face, face to face, like a friend. Here's your homework for this week. We're going to go into some other things. Your homework for this week is going to be to read Exodus 35 through the end of the book, which is 40. It's only five chapters and they're fairly short. So write this down somewhere, put a mental note. Your, your assignment this week is to read in your own time Exodus 35 through 40. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of a spoiler here because Exodus 35 through 40 is actually God. He didn't just want to visit the people. He wanted to live among them. Right up to this point, he just would come and he would encounter Moses at the tent, but he didn't live there. His cloud, the cloud would live off the tent. So he gives Moses this, this plan, this strategy to build a tabernacle. It was still a tent, but we're, it's just a big tent. And so he gives Moses this plan. He said, I want, I want to be with my people. I want to be in the midst of them. But there's got to be some order. There's got to be some things. And so you, as you read, you'll read what God gives as the strategy to build the tabernacle. So we move from a tent of meeting to now a tabernacle. Say tabernacle. tabernacle. So this is a big tent. And once Moses and the people do all the things that God tells them to do, the last chapter in Exodus says this. Verses 34 through 36. It says, then the cloud covered the tabernacle, covered it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And here's verse 35. But Moses could no longer enter the tabernacle because the cloud had settled down on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. So this is no longer just God bringing the cloud. There's a difference here. It comes and it settles. It comes and it stays. It remains, and it says, His glory filled the temple. Now, I love what Bill John If we were to experience the fullness of the glory of God, we would explode because it's too good. Right? We just couldn't handle it. Right? We would spontaneously just combust. 
We, we just, woo, you're too good, God. <laughs> so if we imagine that the glory of the Lord filled the temple, it was too good in there to go in. You couldn't go in anymore because it's too good. <laughs> Hold on to that thought. It was too good. It was too good. So here's where I need my volunteers. Who's, who's going to be my volunteer? I got Chuck. Come on now, Chuck. Come on. Kelly, anybody else? Come on now, I don't know your name. Tell me. Ke another Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. All right, you got Anthony. I need two more, all right. Anybody else? Uh, How many do you need? Come on, Edward. Uh, Edward, uh, Edward uh, you need two, yeah, David. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna put Anthony and Chuck. You guys come here. Anthony, you're gonna stand here. Right here. <laughs> Chuck, you're gonna stand here. Okay, and if you guys feel really comfortable, just hold me. Okay. All right, just hold that. It's okay. Your brothers in Christ. Okay, so you guys are gonna killing. You guys are gonna like put your hands up like this. Like, have you seen the military where they take the sword and they like put them up like this? Oh, like each other. There you go. Okay, there's that. That's good. Okay, and then Kelly. And Edward, you guys are going to stand here. And you guys are going to just, you're just going to stand side by side, okay? Okay. So, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek into the tabernacle. And so what, what they would do is God had this set up where they would enter into levels of encounter with God. Okay? So... We'll call these guys the gate. Everybody say the gate. The gate. Okay? And then we had a courtyard. And then these guys say the door. The door. Okay? And then we had the holy place. And then these guys say the curtain. The curtain. And then we have the holy of holies. Okay? So we have, we have the gate, the, the door, and the Because this helps us understand how the progression of how we get closer to God. Amen. Yeah. How many of you have ever been to Lindbergh's class yes. entering the Holy of Holies? Yes. Okay, this is, she teaches this beautifully and wonderfully. It's a wonderful picture, and there are certain keys that open up each of these um, doors or entrances that open up. So, Scripture says in Psalms, that we enter his gate with what? Thanksgiving and praise, right? We enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise. So when I come and I allow my gratitude and thanksgiving to rise up to God and I begin to praise him, guess what opens up for me? The gates open up. And I'm now coming to the courtyard. I'm taking a step. This is God's front yard. God's front yard, and I'm hanging out. We can have barbecues here. Right? right? We can have we can have block parties. Okay? Right. We can roast marshmallows together. A little campfire time. Okay, but he wants to come. Um, he wants to come? Oh, he likes barbecue fish. All right. Not for everybody, but they got steak for those that don't like fish. I like fish. All right. So, this brings Thanksgiving and praise brings me into the front yard of God, into the courts. So how do we go through? Thanksgiving. What are we celebrating this month, this week? Thanksgiving. Okay, there's a reason, there's a reason why God called us into a heart of thanksgiving and praise. Because he wants us to take a step closer to him. He wants to invite you over to his house. And he wants you to come and spend time with him. You're off getting tired. I'm sorry. Guys. <laughs> Maybe you just, just, just tell yourself, um, you know, I'm doing it with my own job. Yeah, right? Okay, so now, so the rule was you can't get in the gate without thanksgiving and praise. So now, the door into his house, see, God wants us to come real close. And so he says, oh, will you come inside? I got stuff I want to show you. And it's not my big screen TV. 
I want you to come inside and the way, so this is the door into his house. So everyone say, remember these guys are the door. They were the gate. This is the door. This is his front door. The way we enter into the Lord's house is through repentance. Say repentance. repentance. Okay, so I'm going to describe repentance to you, but I'm going to let you guys put your arms down. So I'm going to go through the door and repentance, this is a couple different things here. One is I recognize that I'm not worthy to come in. There is a place. I've messed up. I have sinned in my life. I have done wrong things. And he is holy. And so I must come to him and say, God, wash me clean. Yeah. Because of the blood of Jesus. Come in. Now, they didn't have Jesus yet. So guess what was happening out there? Actually, I don't want to give that away. I want you guys to read it yourself. But okay. <laughs> out there, they would offer the sacrifices. Right. Yeah. And they would repent. Through the blood of the sacrifices, we're gonna we're gonna have a blast next week, guys, talking about this. They would offer the sacrifices out there so they could come in. Okay, now not everyone got to come into the holy place. This was actually set aside for the priests, but God's done some cool stuff since then. So there would be a sacrifice made. Now Jesus did the sacrificing for us, so we no longer have to do that. So all we have to do is come in. It's God says that if you will confess your sins, I am faithful and just, and I will forgive your sin. Amen. I'm faithful and I'm just. I will forgive your sins, and I will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Amen. That is good news, you guys. That is really good news. So he's made the way. He actually opened the door for us. Yeah, he did. And all we have to do is say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so he invites us in, and guess what happens here? See, the other part of repentance is we get a new thought. Amen. Our mind is to become transformed, and we no longer think the same way that we used to think. We get new thoughts about God, and we get new thoughts about ourselves, and we get new thoughts about our life, and our family members, and our friends, and our purpose. And in this living room, we're having wonderful conversations with God that are shaping and molding our mind. Teaching us how to speak and how to be with him and what it looks like to be a part of his family because you're his kid. Yeah. Didn't know if you knew that. Amen. You're his kid. Yeah. You're his kid and he wants you home. Right. He wants you home. He wants you to stay home. He's not trying to keep you out. He's actually calling you back. Uh, right. Come on. He wants you to stay home. And so repentance is this. Now, who were these guys again? Do you remember? The curtain. curtain. Good. Well, awesome. So, the curtain, this was not your shower curtain. <laughs> this is a massive, multiple layers of material that was thick and seriously heavy. And what this did is this, this separated the people from the Holy of Holies, which, which was the place where God's presence literally rested and stayed inside the tabernacle. And, and the Ark of the Covenant, which you'll read about if you do your homework, the Ark of the Covenant was inside the Holy of Holies, yes. and he literally rested, his glory rested upon the mercy seat yes. there. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful picture of what God was actually going to do. Yes. <laughs> so, the only way that the priest could enter from the holy place into the Holy of Holies the key to go through the curtain is obedience. Right. It's obedience. So we're talking about intimacy today. So God wants us to come over for a barbecue, but then he wants you to come in the house, and he wants you to really, I really want to spend some time in my den, in my secret place. If you would like to come, I've got really comfy chairs, and it's really nice in there, and we can maybe share a drink together and talk about really, really good stuff. And so the only way into the Holy of Holies was through obedience. And so what they, what God had is he had a set of rules. These were things they had to do in order to enter in. If they didn't do it, they were unclean and they would die. Which that seems really harsh, but you guys need to understand that there was no atonement yet for sin. And so in order for them to come into a holy place, being unholy, they were not made holy yet. 
being unholy, in order for them to come into the holy place, they have to do some things to make themselves presentable. Yeah. How many of you have ever been to a job interview where you knew you were going to go get a better suit and you're going to clean yourself up and comb your hair and put on some deodorant? You're going to do what you need to do <laughs> to present yourself pleasing to that employer, right? That was, yes. uh, if you're a good employee, that's what you did, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and so it's the same way. We are we are presenting ourselves before God and there's preparation. Any any ceremony that we celebrate, whether it be a marriage or even a funeral or other things, we dress appropriately for the occasion. We prepare our heart. We prepare our minds to do that. We're doing the same thing with this. So through obedience, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Through obedience, we enter into the curtain. Yeah. Into yeah. the very near presence of God. Yes. You guys did a great job. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So fast forward a couple thousand years. Things have changed. First Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20 says, Don't you realize that your body is now the temple of the Spirit of God who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. Amen. We enter through the gate with thanksgiving. Now, we don't have to wait. You can do this at home. You can do this in your shower. You can do this in your car, on the way to work. You can do this while you're waiting in the grocery store. You can do this at the gas station. You can do this just standing around. We enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Guess what? You can be close to God all that you want. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's the good news. Yeah. <laughs> you can be as close to God as you want to, as much as you want to. Right? This is all in our court. Right. It's all our choice. Right. We teach that the walk of life that Jesus died to give us is a choice. You have to choose. Guess what your flesh doesn't want to do? It doesn't want to get grateful. It wants to think lack and fear and discouragement and I feel like I don't feel like being thankful. It doesn't look like God's really doing anything in my life. I don't have what I want. <laughs> you guys have all heard this voice in your head. I'm not the only one. So this is where you get to make a choice. God says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, let me remind you, rejoice! Rejoice! I read a book years ago called The Dangerous Duty of Delight. <laughs> The dangerous duty of delight. Learning how to live a life of gratitude. Amen. Learning how to live in a constant state of praise. Constant state of praise where no bad things, no bad news, no lack of messages, no fear messages come out of your mouth. No negativity. Right? No garbage coming out of your mouth because you're living in praise. Yeah. I live in the front yard of God's house. Yes. I live there. I get to go in every day and hang out in the living room. Go into the den. <laughs> Gratitude. Thanksgiving brings us through the gate. You can have it as close as you want, as much as you want. Repentance is this place where we're transformed. And, and we're invited in as a child to come in the house. So, I want to, the significant thing here is what Jesus did. Jesus paid this price as the offering sacrifice, as the lamb, to atone, atone for your sins. Remember, this is the holy place. Anything that enters through God's front door has to be holy. God has imparted to you Christ's righteousness. Thank you, Lord. 
and has made you and me holy. Put your hand on your heart. Say, I am holy. God has imparted to me Christ's righteousness. I am now a righteous child of God. I am holy and made right with God. Hallelujah. Because of Jesus, we now have full access into God's living room. Yes. Where we get to hang out as often as we want, as much as we want. Again, it's our choice. Because God has done this amazing thing where he's put his temple. It's no longer a tent. It's not a church building. It's you and me. We're now the temple of God. We're now the house of God. We're not going to a place and we're not waiting for the cloud. He has put his very spirit and presence inside of us. That is our new reality in Christ. That is good news. That is good news. I want to read to you 2 Corinthians 6, verse 16. This is, this, this is one that might challenge some of us. And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, and I looked up where he said it. He said it in Jeremiah and in Ezekiel and multiple other places. But these specific words he said both in Jeremiah and Ezekiel. I believe it was Jeremiah 32 and I can't remember what the Ezekiel one was. You can go with that. Uh, as I said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. I will live in them. I will be with, God is for me, God is with me, God is in me. Say it again. God is for me, God is with me, God is in me. And that's intimacy. That's intimacy. This is us getting close to God. Us choosing, choosing through gratitude and thanksgiving, through repentance, through obedience, to come into the very near presence of God and to gain insight and have our eyes opened up and have our ears opened up and have our heart, hearts opened up to have face-to-face -face friendship encounter with God. Let me tell you, there's no loneliness there. I know some of you in here struggle with loneliness. I struggle with loneliness. You can say, how? You have been married to Holly for almost 20 years. How in the world? <laughs> there was a period of time I was very lonely for about four years. Very lonely. And I had to cry out to God to be my friend. I was crying, literally crying, for God to be my friend. In this place, there's no loneliness. Thank you. If you're battling loneliness, come closer. Amen. Get closer. He's invited you in. There's nothing separating you. Nothing. What you think is separating you is a lie. Yes. I'm serious. I'm going to say that again. What you think is separating you is a lie. Fear is a lie. Shame is a lie. Condemnation is a lie. Imperfection is a lie. Doubt is a lie. Rejection is a lie. It's a lie. Because he's opened up the doorway for us. There's nothing separating us from the love of God any longer, according to Romans 8. Nothing. We are now the temple of God. Therefore, we might have to clean some stuff out of our house. Actually, we do have to clean stuff out. There's things in our house that don't belong. They don't belong in God's house. They do not belong there. Yes. And so we need to ask him to come. Lord, will you give me a interior decorating and makeover inside of my heart, inside of my life? I need to be renovated. And there might be a little bit of demolition, but a lot of reconstruction. <laughs> You guys, our purpose 
Our purpose in God is first to be in relationship with him, in intimacy. Everything that he's done throughout all of our history has been to bring us closer. Right. Everything he has done has been to bring us close. And us getting close helps others get close. Right. Yeah. Us entering in helps others enter in. Us being transformed through repentance, renewing our mind, agreeing with God, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It helps others be transformed. Our obedience, intimacy, do not think that you have intimacy with God if you are not willing to be obedient. Do not. Idols do not belong in the temple of God. Disobedience is always connected to an idol. I'm going to say that again. Disobedience is always connected to an idol. I don't know no, 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 no. Yeah, we do. All the time. All the time. You don't have to have a Buddha set up in your house and a little, you know, hum and hum and whatever. <laughs> for you to breathe and be bowing down to an idol. Seriously, guys, we bow down to garbage all the time. Yeah, yeah. With our emotions, with our thinking, with our money. With our actions, with our eye game, with our ear game, yeah. we bow down to idols all the time. And it doesn't belong. So don't think that intimacy is going to come without obedience. But when you become obedient, when you and I become obedient, it helps others be obedient. It helps others be obedient. Stand up, Tommy, guys. These are my mom and dad. Come down, dad. I'm going to try this without coming. <laughs> Yesterday, my mom and dad ce celebrated 40 years of marriage. <laughs> Keep Of repentance. Yeah. 
changing the way that they thought and walking out obedience. And that equals intimacy. This is intimacy, guys. Intimacy sometimes is hard. It's difficult. It's sometimes messy, but it's beautiful. There's no greater expression of love and, and, and relationship than the intimacy that comes between us and God and in marriage. Thank you, guys. Give them another hand. Some of you might say, well, I'm not married. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're, you're part of the bride. Yeah. And Jesus is the groom. Yes. And you're married to him. And I don't care if that weirds you out as a guy. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> We're married. No, listen. He made a covenant with us. And he put a ring on it. Called the Holy Spirit. No, listen to me. Romans says, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit like an engagement ring. He put a ring on it. He put a ring on it. You now belong to Christ. You've been married with Christ. You are one with Christ. And you are to live as an expression of intimacy to the world. You define God to the world so the world can find God. You define God to the world so the world can find God. And if you want to know what your purpose is in God, at the very foundational level, that's it. God wants to do way more exciting things too, but that's it. So don't, don't think that your purpose has to come with a pulpit, or a microphone, or a label, or a title, or a position, or a degree. Your purpose is that you're a child of God. Your purpose is that he has redeemed you and he's opened up the doorway into his very near presence. So your homework this week is go read Exodus chapter 35 through 40. I'm serious about this. You might think it's boring because it's got a bunch of numbers and different things that God, what is the point? We're going to talk about the point next week. But I want you to go read Exodus 35 through 40. And we're going to come back next week and we're going to look at what God was doing, what he was giving us a picture of that we just got to hear about today. Everything was pointing. Everything God has been doing throughout history was to get us close Amen. to him. Amen. Because that's the thing that was lost when sin entered the world. Amen. That's what was lost. But he's restored intimacy with us. And we have to become a picture of that to other people. We have to. Right. Otherwise the world will not see it. The world will not see it. If we just look like the world, no one will see God. Right. No one will go beyond God. Well, I believe there's a God somewhere. That exists. Maybe. I think so. But if we are displaying gratitude and thanksgiving, repentance and obedience let me tell you, people want to run through those doors. People are begging for a real encounter. People are desperate to know God. Desperate to know God. And God is desperate to encounter them. Desperate. He went to the full extent to redeem us. Stand up. Let's bless each other and go out to What are you going to go home and read this week? <laughs> Stretch your hands out over your neighbor. Let's bless each other. May the Lord bless you.